everybody. Welcome. This is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast, and I'm with my good buddy, Sean McCloskey, today. How are you doing, Sean? I'm good. How are you, man? Awesome. Listen, we just did five minutes of this, and I forgot to hit the record button, so we're going to do this again <laughs> like a complete dork. Uh, but, Sean, uh, welcome to the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. And, uh, you know, this is a, a podcast that I love doing. I've been doing it now for like four or five years with Alex. Alex couldn't be here today. And uh, we've got listeners in over 160 countries from all over Europe. And uh, I, I love this business. And today we're going to talk about something a little different than what we normally have talked about in the past. Normally we talk about deals, doing real estate, flipping properties, wholesaling, things like that. We're actually going to talk about the coaching business today. And the coaching business has been very profitable to me, very profitable to Sean. But the coolest thing is we've, we've, we've changed a lot of lives. I know, Sean, I'm, in, I'm a part of the Life and Air coaching program that you and Steve Cook started, I don't know, six years ago? Yeah. It's been a while, and uh, it's changed my life. Uh, it's made me a better investor. It's made me a better father, a better husband, uh, a better coach. And so I owe a lot of my success, if, if, if you call it that, to this guy here that I'm interviewing, Sean. He's, he's a mentor to me uh, and a good friend. And same with Steve Cook. And so, you know, one of the things we're going to, we're going to talk about the coaching business and the, the real estate information selling business. It's a very profitable business. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I've made a lot of money, well over seven figures in the last few years, selling, coaching, helping people, training them with courses, with products and with, with, uh, with coaching. And, uh, I love the business because it allows me to help people and have an impact and change their lives and make a lot of good money doing it. At the same time, doing deals. So it's not like it's either one or the other. So you either, as a coach, you're either doing deals with your students or on your own, or you're lending money on deals or and, and you're helping people do <clears throat> deals. So we're going to talk about that. And I wanted Sean to come on and talk a little bit about his story talk a little bit about how he got started doing deals, how he got started in the coaching business and why he enjoys it. And uh, so just real quick though, first go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, download the Fast Cash Survival Kit if you haven't already. It's a fantastic resource. And leave us a review on iTunes. If you like the show, please, um, please let us know. Leave us a review on iTunes and we will send you a bunch of really cool books and videos and all that good stuff. There is a podcast we did a few months ago called leave a review get free stuff and if you go to that search for it at night in the um, in the in the real estate investing mastery.com website it'll tell you what to do the steps to get involved in leaving the review and sending us an email and we'll get you all that free stuff so sean one of the things i love about real estate in the info business is that you can make a difference and help people and it's really easy to bash the gurus and it's easy to bash those people that are making money selling information. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm one to proud, that's proud to say, you know, I'm thankful for the coaches. I'm thankful for gurus. Because if it wasn't for them and if they weren't willing to sell their information, whether it was through a book or a course or through coaching, I, I, couldn't, I would not be where I am today. If they weren't willing yeah. to share their information and charge for it, that you know, I wouldn't have bought that. I wouldn't have learned this business, and I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't be where I am today without coaches. And uh, why don't we introduce yourself, Sean, and talk a little bit about your history? How did you get started in real estate way back when you were selling pagers? <laughs> <laughs> had to start with that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, first of all, I agree with you, man. And I think, uh, I think. If you've got a, a knowledge in your head that can benefit somebody else, why not benefit somebody else with it? Some people have this scarcity mentality that says, I don't want to share anything I'm doing with anybody else because I'll create competition. And I think that is a bunch of garbage. Um, matter of fact, I found that out firsthand. I'll, I'll share this in a, little, in a little bit. But I found that out firsthand when I started coaching back in 2008 or so. Um, I was coaching people in my own backyard. So technically my own competition but I'll show you guys today how to actually make money on that where you're profiting yourself yeah. and benefiting other people too. But, you know, I started out back in 2003, um, got laid off of a job I had for seven years and learned pretty quickly that there's no such thing as uh, a certainty in a job. And I decided to go find my own certainty and uh, create my own little destiny, if you will. 
And so went out and started flipping houses. And in the first, I don't know, five years or so, I flipped about maybe 250 uh, houses or so. And I, I, you know, I did pretty well with it. I, I got in the pre-foreclosure business and uh, I flipped most of my stuff. I had a few rentals here and there. But what I found is there was these periods of time where I would go out and I would sell, you know, eight, nine, ten houses in a month. And then the next month I would not sell any or I'd sell one. And so for me, it was always like this constant battle between filling in the gaps of when I was going to do a closing. And that's something that you have no control over. You can control how much marketing you're going to do. You can control, you know, how many appointments you're going to try to go on. But, you know, you can't control how many deals you're going to buy. And pretty soon I got introduced to coaching and the rest is history. So now we do deals. We fund deals for people. Um, I have a coaching program that I run with Steve Cook through our, our business Life and Air. And we help change people's lives through that. Um, but then we also do some uh, some lending for people. I own a RIA here locally. And we try to help other people get what they want to get. And as a result, we profit from it. I'm not ashamed to say I do because I love what I do. We've got students that have been with us for six, seven years, and they don't leave. Why do they keep paying for it? Because they're getting a lot out of it. And then, I, you know, I forgot to include that in the introduction. I did in the first introduction that I didn't record. <laughs> but I didn't do it in the second one. Uh, I, I, Steve, uh, Sean and I have been friends for a long time and since 2006. And uh, you were probably one of my first coaches, Sean. And um, Actually, I'm, you were my first round of coaching students back then. Yeah. It was that, we yeah. used to have an office at a, at a store front. Yeah. And, yep. uh, you know, you'd had come as, as, uh, on a, whatever weekday it was and talked about real estate and talked about deals and, it was fantastic, and you'll talk more about that in a second here. But you started Life in Air in 2009, and I joined Life in Air without hesitation, and it's it's changed my life. Uh, you and Steve Cook uh, basically have changed hundreds, maybe thousands of people's lives with the book, with the seminars that you do, with the coaching that you have, and just the friendships that I've made from that, the connections, the the network that I've made through life and air, it's been amazing. And it's made me a better father, a better husband, a better coach, a better investor. And so I, I totally 100% believe in the power of coaching. I think it's absolutely critical in this business. And the cool thing about coaching, and we'll talk about this as we go through this, is it's so leverageable, right? You can make very good money doing deals, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's sporadic. It goes up and down. And if you have a heart to help people and to teach and you want to coach and make some good money doing that, then this is a podcast for you. And we're going to be talking about the coaching business, but Sean, talk about, you know, how your journey into life and in air real quickly and how it kind of relates to the coaching business. And, and, uh, what have, what have you learned since starting life and air with Steve? Cook? Yeah. Well, you know, so we all heard the word millionaire. Everybody wants to be a millionaire, right? So <clears throat> what it is that they want is not just the money. It's what they think the money is going to do for them. And so when we say we want to make more money this year, what we really want is freedom to make decisions, to travel, to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And so I, th I don't think we just want to be a millionaire. I think we want to be a life in air, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have a life in the process. And none of us want to build a business that makes millions of dollars that requires us to be a hostage to the business where we have to work day in and day out and be there every minute of every day. And I certainly don't want that either. I love what I do, but there's a difference between I get to do it versus I have to do it every day. And so when I first started coaching, this was like, this was a total accident. I started hanging out with Steve Cook, who's my now business partner. Um, he was actually my coach back then. And, uh, we were, he was sharing these life and air principles with me. And there were some things that I was doing in my current business at the time that I was a little frustrated with. I had a real estate brokerage at the time. I owned, um, I, I had this big office building, this beautiful office building, that, which by the way, you don't need as a real estate investor. No one comes to your house. You always go to other people's house. Okay. Nobody comes to your office, I should say. And so I had all these expenses going out the door. I was closing a lot of deals, maybe 70 deals a year, but I had a lot of like upkeep to do 70 deals a year. I had employees and staff and expenses and overhead and an office and all this stuff. And so I decided to open up this brokerage, a real estate brokerage to try to supplement some of the, the downtime when I didn't do a deal one month. And I had 16 real estate agents in my office. Joe, your, your wife was one of the first ones I had in. And uh, each of those real estate agents paid a small fee per month to hang their real estate license with my brokerage. 
And then we had two meetings a month where for about two hours, all of the agents would come in. And by the way, these were all real estate agents that were investors. So this was not like we were out listing people's houses. We were all trying to do creative real estate stuff. And so all these agents were paying me $75 per month to hang their license with my office. And then my office, my brokerage was supposed to get a little percentage of any deals that they closed with using their real estate agent uh, license. I was supposed to get a little piece of that and it was supposed to kind of supplement things. Well, what I found was real estate investors who are also real estate agents are some of the most creative people on earth and they do everything in their power to make sure no commissions go out ever that's, anywhere. That's anywhere, a real right? polite way to put that. I, I, <laughs> that was so nice. That was suave. That was suave. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I can't blame them because I would do the same thing. But the bottom line is, is the brokerage ended up being a lot of responsibility for me. But it didn't end up being as profitable as I would have liked <laughs> it to have been. And so Steve introduced me to this concept called Life and Air. And we found out that the the uh, the whole brokerage did not fit my vision for what I really wanted to do in my business and my life. You know, it didn't fit in so many ways. It was a lot of responsibility. It was a lot of paperwork. If any deal went bad, it was going to be my responsibility as the broker. I was the one who was going to get sued. I was the one who was liable for all of these creative deals. And that might be okay if I was making a ton of money with them. But again, the realtor slash investors in my office were creative and they found ways to skirt paying a commission through the brokerage. So I wasn't making any money on top of it. I was making 16 agents times 75 bucks a piece, whatever that comes out to. That's what I was pretty much making in the brokerage. And so Steve said, why don't you get rid of the brokerage? And my response was, man, it took me a long time to build this brokerage. I got all the paperwork in place now. You know, at least it's some money coming in, and I don't want to just turn that off right now. And Steve said, "Why don't you turn those people into coaching students?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "I don't know, man. I, what do you mean by that?" And he says, "Well, you know, instead of just charging them seventy-five bucks a month to hang their license there, what is it that you're providing them? What what is it that you like about the brokerage?" And I said, "Man, I love these two meetings a month where we sit down for about two hours at a time." I said, "I love these meetings so much, and I love helping the people so much that our two-hour meetings usually go to three-hour meetings because yeah. I just like doing it. And then we usually go out to dinner afterwards, and I'm there for another hour just because I enjoy helping people get their deals done." And Steve said, "Well, has anybody during those two-hour meetings, um, first of all, do they all show up all the time, or do you have to beat them over their head to get them to show up? And are they making money based off of what you're sharing?" And I said, well, yeah, they all show up. Just about everybody shows up to every single meeting. Everybody's there till the end. Nobody leaves early. And yeah, there's been a number of people that have made some pretty killer money off of what we've shared in that room. And Steve said, okay, but you're not getting any of that and you're providing all the value. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe. I, I, what are you suggesting? And he said, go in tomorrow. He said, shut the brokerage down. And give them 30 days to hang their license somewhere else. That's where all the liability is. That's where all the paperwork is. That's where all of the, the stress is for you. You don't even like doing that part anyway. You like, you like teaching and coaching and helping them and turn them into coaching students. And they can go hang their license with somebody else who can help them better in that department. But maybe you could help them yeah. get their deals done and, and so on. And I said, Steve – what are you suggesting I charge? Because you know they're only paying 75 bucks a month right now and they already get all that stuff. And he said, well, start charging them 400 bucks and, and start splitting their deal, 400 bucks a month, by the way, and start splitting their deals with them. And I was like, no way. They're never going to go for this. There absolutely no way, no how. And Steve said, well, even if they don't go for it, the brokerage is like the Achilles heel to you. Get rid of it. And if they stay with you as coaching students, then you're going to find out real quick how much value you really provided to them. And if they all leave, you're going to know that you didn't provide the value that you thought you did. Yeah. And so I went into the next meeting that we did the very next week. And I'm, Joe, I think you were there at this meeting. I remember, so, yeah. And I came in. There was 16 agents in the room. I said, this is a mandatory meeting. Y'all all, all got to come because I'm announcing <laughs> something. I remember that, yeah. And I said, guys, the, coach, the, uh, the brokerage as of 30 days from now is being shut down. It doesn't fit my vision. And so if you guys want to stay on as coaching students, here's how it's going to work. You're going to start paying me 400 a month instead of 75 a month. And you're still going to have to go hang your broke license somewhere else, which means you might have another expense to do that somewhere else. But now you're going to pay me $400 a month if you want to stay. If you don't, I get that too. 
But in order for me to continue coaching you and helping you how I have been helping you, it's got to work for me too. And right now it doesn't work for me. So 400 a month and we're going to split your next three deals together 50-50. And then after that, you can decide if you want to continue paying the monthly fee and stay in. Then you don't have to split deals. But I did that and I could not believe it. Guess how many of the 16 people stayed, Joe? Do, do you remember the number? 15. I wasn't was, one of them. No, it was 13. It was 13. <laughs> no, it was good. I remember, I think, I think I remember you doing something where you said, listen, if it doesn't work, that's fine. But if you, if you leave and you want to come back, the price is going to be higher. Yeah. But there was some kind of a, a, set, a sign up fee that you would have had to pay. Yep. And yep, so there yep. was a, and that's something that you talk about a lot when you're teaching sales and co- selling coaching and stuff. Have that have that scarcity in there that it's legitimate. Listen, you can leave, but if you're going to come back, the price is going to go up. And I think that did a lot for me. I remember it did a lot for me thinking, you know what? I better stay in this because I see the tremendous value in this. The point is the value was way higher than the cost. And that's why so many people stayed in. And by the way, this is where, you know, a lot of people get a bad taste for some of the gurus that are out there peddling stuff too, because sometimes the value is not there for what you paid. Matter of fact, now that I speak, um, I speak with a lot of national speakers. I get to know them real well. Matter of fact, I coach a number of them today. And once you get to know them really well, most of them are good people at heart, but some of them turn it into such a money sucking business that they've forgotten why they got into it in the first place, which is, yeah, to make money. But the really cool thing is if you have a strong desire in your heart to help other people, then you can make it profitable. Profits don't come first and people will smell that. If they smell that you're just a, a number to them, they're going to know that they're either not going to sign up or they're going to sign up and they're going to be disappointed. And the truth is, if you really knew what most of these gurus' lives look like, you probably wouldn't want to learn from many of them anyway. There's some good ones out there. Don't get me wrong. There's many good ones out there. I, I have a coach myself and I pay a lot of money for coaches. But you know, some of them out there kind of give the rest of them a bad name. Yeah. If your heart truly is out to help, there's nothing wrong with profiting from it. Especially here, when I did my first deal split with one of my students, I'll never forget this. This was only about a month, maybe six weeks into my coaching program. 13 of the 16 people went from paying 75 a month to having hanging their license with my brokerage to now I got 13 of those that said yes and started paying me $400 a month at that point. Mm-hmm. That's like five grand a month I started having coming in every single month, which subsidized some of my expenses when I had a slow month in my real estate business. It was awesome. Yeah. And I, by the way, I had some boundaries in place where I said, listen, this doesn't mean that you get my personal cell phone number and get to call me at three o'clock in the morning when you have a question. I put some boundaries in place too of here's when you can call, here's how this works, here's how we're going to meet. And it ended up being a reasonable amount of time I was investing in it. But when I went out and did my first flip with uh, my very first student, his name was Kevin, Uh, We went out and we did a pre-foreclosure deal together and I literally had, if I had two hours invested in this deal, that's a lot. Like I I, I maybe have about an hour and a half invested in this deal. And remember, we split the first three deals with the students and I ended up making, well, we, I should say, made $86,000 on that first deal of which I had less than two hours wrapped up in. Now, some people look at that and they go, so you made half of $86,000 for two hours worth of work. That's not fair. So I sat down with Kevin afterwards. I said, Kevin, tell me, do you think, cause you've been paying me 400 bucks a month now for the last couple months and we got our first deal closing and we just made 86 grand, but I get 43,000 of that. How do you feel? And Kevin's response to me, I will never forget this. He said, Sean, he goes, first of all, I don't even know that I ever would have gotten that deal closed without your expertise. Second of all, he said, if I would have gotten it closed, I can promise you I would not have made $86,000. Mm-hmm. With a couple of things I told him to do and to tweak his deal, he said, I might have made 20. So he said, so instead of making 20, I got to split half of 86. I made more with you as a coach anyway. And it was in that moment that I, because at first I felt bad for charging people, but it was in that moment that I was like, okay, maybe the value that you bring to the table sometimes isn't how much time you spend on it. Sometimes, you know, when you go to a doctor and they tell you what the diagnosis is, it may have only taken them five minutes to come up with a diagnosis, but it took them 15 years of school to be able to get that diagnosis in five minutes. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. And that's what I learned there. I was just thinking, and you can still see me okay, right? My, my yeah. Skype was flicking a little bit. Yeah. 
It's a little blurry, but it's good. All right. Well, um, I was just thinking about that because just yesterday I got a check from one of my students. We're splitting a deal. Part of the agreement was we'll split the first two deals. And this check was only 1500 bucks, so he made three grand on it. Sure. But uh, you know what? He wrote me this awesome thank you letter. And, uh, Joe, this is awesome. I couldn't have done this without you. It just made me feel warm and fuzzy. Like, you know, this is so awesome. 1500 bucks. you know, that's not a lot of money for a deal. But I mean, that is a lot of money. I'm not complaining about that. But sure. But just the fact that I got more, more blessing, I guess, out of seeing how excited he was and how it's making a difference yeah. in his life than that money gave me. And uh, he he's done 16 deals since January 1. So that's been in the last four and a half, almost five months. He's done 16 deals. And uh, he's he's splitting the first only the first two deals with me. I should have maybe next time <laughs> require more deal splits for more deals. But the the let's talk numbers, Sean. Um, and you know, if, is it okay if we kind of be an open book a little bit here? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. To a certain um, extent, if, yes. If I feel a little too uncomfortable. I'll let you know. Go ahead, but go ahead. Yeah. You you sell really really well. You make a lot of good money from speaking and coaching. And I do well as well. I mean, I do a lot of deals. Uh, you know, I don't know what the split is between what I'm doing in deals and what I'm doing with coaching. It's it's very it's different. It means different every month. But sure, I've made I've made well over almost well. <laughs> I, I don't know what to share either. But I've I've made uh -huh. I've made well over six figures. Just six figures, seven figures, uh, selling coaching and and selling my course over the last couple of years. And, um, it's, you know, it's sometimes I, I get a little embarrassed by talking about that because it, it is a lot of money, but I tell you what, I love the coaching business. I absolutely love it to get to talk to somebody and help them when they're stuck. Like, you know, I've, I've bought course after course after course, and I'm just completely overwhelmed. I have no idea what to do next. Yeah. And since I do, I've been there, done that, and I've coached other people, I, I know exactly what the issue is, and I can and I can help them in a thirty minute phone call to just radically, dramatically change their business, yeah, and help them break through where they can. You know what? Holy cow! If I just do that, then uh, and so I, I love that business. I love doing that more than I like getting paid. I like getting. Well, paid. Let me, can I jump in real quick? Yes, yeah, please. You just said something really important. So in the coaching, and this is why I have a coach too, sometimes when, when you're in your own mess, it's really hard to see your way out of your own mess. I, we just had a situation, myself and Steve Cook, in the last two months where we brought our challenges to a new coach, somebody who had, does not, is not familiar with our whole business and everything. We brought it to a new coach, and we said, we want a whole fresh set of eyes to see what some of our challenges are to help us overcome them. We had a conversation with the guy for about 45 minutes, and he knew all the solutions to our problems. Now, why did he know them? They're some of the same bits of advice that we give our students. So he didn't teach us anything dramatically new. He got us out of our own heads for a minute, and he got wow. us to see things that he could see very easily because he's not the one in the thick of the forest, if that makes sense. Right. And so that's what we do for our students all day long. But sometimes even me, man, doing it for myself, it's a whole different deal. When you have some kind of blockage in your own head or you've got something in your own mind, marketing that's screwing up you think you've crossed every t and dotted every i you haven't man and the reason you haven't is because you're so close to it sometimes sometimes you're so close to it that you forget that you didn't push the record button on an interview like this <laughs> and you know you know little things like that happen and we laugh about it but it, that happens with all of us not just the brand new investor it happens with the experienced guy too and so i don't care where you're at in the level of experience if you're somebody who has only closed 10 deals and you're saying, well, that doesn't qualify to me to be a coach. It does qualify you to coach somebody who's never done one or who's only done one. You've already done have 10 times the experience than somebody else. You don't have to have flipped 300 deals or have a course or be the national guru speaker to go out and start helping somebody else. Um, it, that makes sense? Oh, yeah, totally. And it's, it's hard for me to be transparent about this because it's, it's very personal to me. And I, I, I've, I've made very good money selling coaching over the, mm -hmm. over the years. And you've done very well as well s selling your, your, um, your life and air products, your short sale products. Um, talk a little bit, Sean, about, I mean, you're, you're, you're probably right now the best 
selling speaker in the you know, speaker circuit going around the country. And you don't even travel that much. You're very selective about where you go. Would you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how well you're doing, if you don't mind? How well you That's odd. <laughs> how, <laughs> how much money uh, are you making? No. There, but, so, all right, well, let me, let, me, um, let me encourage you with something. So when you have something of value that can benefit other people, why would you not benefit other people with it? So I... I don't like to travel 50 weeks a year and go speak, but I do like to go about once every four to six weeks. I uh, will usually go somewhere, whether it be a real estate investor association or, um, you know, I, I have spoken on stages with, uh, you know, Kiyosaki and some guys like that. Why would I not take the information that I have struggled so hard to learn and help somebody else overcome some of their struggles? And so all I did is I bundled that together in a package that kind of trains people on what to do. And then from the stage or from a webinar or, uh, from a number of different resources, I can go sell that training. You can do it online. You can do it through webinars. You can do it through just people visiting a web page. You guys have all seen this stuff before. And you can sell this information to people where now instead of you having to go out and do one deal to get money, I love that approach, by the way. The real estate business is profitable. And by the way, I should mention where I have started to have a problem with gurus is when they're still teaching stuff that they used to do 28 years ago and they haven't done it in 28 years. That becomes a problem. Yeah, totally. So – I'm not suggesting that either, um, but if you have information that's in your head that's valuable, especially if you've made money with it, there is potentially even more money to be made in the information side of it than there is in the actual thing. And the reason why is because there's only so many deals that you can do that you can physically do either in your own hometown or with your own hands or with your own marketing or everything else. But there's an unlimited people uh, amount of people that could actually benefit from the product that teaches them how to do it. And so I can stand in front of a room of 500 people at once and offer a product and sell, you know, $100,000 worth of product in an instant. And I can do that in 60 or 90 minutes. Um, excuse me. Should have turned that one off. But, uh, you know, that's a little bit of the speaking business and the, the information marketing business. Once you have information, if it's compiled in a way where people can understand it and it's good, then you can sell instead of one-to-one -one deals, you can do one-to-many. And that's where, you know, I'll give you an example. I did, um, by the way, this, this doesn't matter if you're doing it, you know, you're speaking to five people or a thousand people. Uh, some people think, well, the, the speaking business is only profitable if you're only speaking to big, huge, large crowds. I just spoke Monday of this week to a crowd of only 40 people. And I'm, I'm supposed to get the final numbers today, but I did well over $30,000 in sales in about an hour and a half. And, you know, I don't tell you that to brag. I tell you that because there was people in that room that need the information. They're hungry for it. Now, I need to have to. I need to understand how to deliver that message in a way that gets them excited and explains to them enough of the benefits where they're willing to part with their money at that time. And that's something that I've kind of gotten good at over the years. Yeah, uh, a little bit of an art to that. But the fact of the matter is, those people are going to go out, take the information, and it's going to change their lives. And so, why would I not be able to get paid for that? Yep. Absolutely, I can. By the way, I turned that trip into a vacation with my kids because it was up at a water park up in Wisconsin, and we turned my little speaking gig for 90 minutes into a four-day fun time at the water park. So why wouldn't I go do that? I can make a ton of money. I can go share what I get to share with people. I get to feel really good about the fact that they're out. They've got the best training on earth. If they are going to pursue pre-foreclosures as part of their strategy, there is no better training than mine out there, and I can say that with confidence because mm -hmm. I've seen it all. And uh <laughs> Why would I not profit from that? I mean, you did the same thing. I remember uh, last year or the year before when you were in Prague, you were still helping and coaching people from Prague all the way overseas back in the United States and even all over the, the world. Yeah. Why would you not do that? You, yeah. There's aspects of your life you get to live. And, you, you know, I remember Zig Ziglar always said a, a saying, and I've really sort of honed in on this. He said, if you want to get everything you want out of life, help enough, enough other people get what they want out of life. And that's all I'm doing. All right, so Sean, what you were saying reminded me of um, something I heard Robert a Robert Allen say. Robert is the famous guru who wrote the book uh, Zero Down, Zero Money Down, or something like that. Yep. He said, "You know, I've made my millions doing deals, and I've made my tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions, teaching people how to do deals." Yeah. And back to what I said before, you know, it's it's easy to criticize and shoot down the guru who's making a lot of money selling coaching. But, um, and there are a lot of, 
you know, dinglings out there doing coaching that they shouldn't <laughs> be doing. Right? Is that putting it nicely? I haven't heard dinglings in a long time. <laughs> so when that's not what we're talking about, right? Don't be a dingling. <laughs> but you can make great money coaching and teaching and helping people do this. And it's so leverageable. You talked about being in, being in Prague. Um, you know, we took uh, we took two months a two month trip to Prague a couple three years ago. Last summer we went for almost three months um, on an RV trip. I made well over a hundred thousand dollars just selling coaching during that three months. And um, we're going to Prague again in a couple months for another mm-hmm. three months. And I'm starting to coach people now from all over the country. I'm doing a couple workshops in Spain with a friend of mine from England. And we're going to be teaching cool. people in Spain at a workshop that's five grand to be there for three days, how to flip deals virtually. And uh, so it's the cool thing about the business, the information business, is that you can, it's very leverageable. And you can train one on one, one to many. You can write a book, you can do a video series, do a podcast. And really, with technology today, you can reach way more people than people could ever have done before in the past. And so with with teaching and coaching, you've been traveling a lot over the years. You, you've been speaking and selling very, very well. There's a real there's a real skill and art to selling information, right? To selling it. To, uh, and, and also performing the coaching and, and delivering on the value. But yeah. will you talk a little bit about the what, what it takes to to sell well? And then let's talk about what what kind of what do you what do you need to do to deliver what you promised that you what, okay. what you sold? Do you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Let me let me give you a couple examples because um, so I actually teach a workshop. Um, about once a year where I bring in national speakers and I teach them how to speak better and sell better from the front of the room or on their webinars or if they're trying to sell coaching or whatever. And by the way, I should mention, you know, if you want to do coaching, you don't have to have this whole product done and everything. If you want to even speak, you don't have to have a whole product. One of my students, uh, Jason Roberts, is out there. He is doing coaching and he's speaking and he doesn't even have a product. Uh, matter of fact, when I teach people, most of the time, I would rather them not have a product because otherwise they tend to structure their product in a way that makes it harder to sell. So if they know what I know and what I can teach them in, in advance, then when and if they ever decide to, to develop a product, they do it the right way. So let me preface with that. But um, So uh, at this speaker selling event, I should say, um, I, if I had a name for it, I would call it How to Speak and Sell from Any Stage, Any Webinar, Anything – Without being a total douchebag, that's what I would call it. <laughs> because you've seen it. I like you know, dingling the, better. The, <laughs> there's the dog and pony show that you see where the guy gets up and he's super fake, and you can tell everything he's saying is scripted, and he's not even a real human being. It feels like. And then at the end, you know, he does this dog and pony show where he makes everybody stand on their head and do all this crazy stuff, and and then he tries to sell this package, and the first two people, you know, get a Mickey Mouse button and or whatever. It's the same dog and pony show that we see all the time, and so I teach people how to do it in a more real way, where more of your own personality can come through, and you'll sell better anyway. And so I do this event, um, and I bring in national speakers. I keep it very very small, and when people express interest in this, I have them put up a $500 deposit to reserve their spot, and then we have a conversation about whether or not it's a good fit for them, because this is one of those things that I don't just teach everybody, because the information can be used to manipulate if it's in the hands of the wrong person. So I always want to make sure I'm interviewing these people before I allow them to come get this training to make sure it's the right person. So during the interview, though, that's also a sales process for me, because they've expressed interest, but they've not paid. I charge $5,000 to come to this, and it's just a two-day, very little event. So to get people to part with five grand, you know, that's for somebody who's a national speaker, that might not be a, a whole lot of money. But for somebody who's just starting out as a speaker, that might be a lot of money for them, especially if they don't know who I am. Yeah. So the selling process is important. And that also, it, it starts when I first made my first contact with them, either through a sales letter or through a video that I did or a Facebook post or whatever. But then I have to actually sell them when I get them on the phone. And that process is the same whether it's one-on-one, it's the same whether it's one to a thousand people in an audience. But there's about 15 different things you need to do when you're selling a product. I'll give you two of them here right now. 
One is you must overcome everyone's objections before they have them. And so this is something, Joe, uh, we were just talking about yesterday. And that's, yeah. is this what you were asking me to share? Oh, sure. Yeah, this is good. Okay. So when, uh, when you're speaking to one person or an audience, you must overcome the other person's objections if they're going to part with their money and give it to you for training or product or courses or coaching or whatever it is. And so I have to think through in advance, what are some objections going to be when people hear what my offer is? And so when I have one live event that I teach in a room, so you physically have to be present like this, um, and I'm teaching it to you know national speakers and some gurus around the country, and, and people are going to attend this and spend a lot of money to be there, what do you think the first objection is that busy people think of when considering whether to attend a live event? Uh, when's the date? Yeah, when's the date? Yeah. So I know that's going to be an objection for everyone. So I have to figure out a way before I have those conversations, how am I going to overcome that objection? And so what I thought is, why don't I not schedule a date? And instead, what I'll do is since I keep this to a very small, intimate event, I only do this for 12 people at a time. Uh, I have the luxury of being able to say, guys, there is no date scheduled. Here's what we'll do. Once you've sent me your deposit and you decide that you're in, then uh, I want you to do a second little assignment for me, and that is send me any blackout dates of dates that you absolutely could not attend an event like this over the course of the next 90 days. You're going to email that to me, and once I get that from you and the other 12 people that register for this event, we'll just pick some dates in between that work for everybody that aren't blackout dates for all 12 of you. And it's easy for me to do that with 12 people. I could never do that if I was going to host an event with 100 or 200 people, but since I'm doing it for 12 people, of course... Uh, I can work around dates that you guys want to work around. So the, I just overcame everyone's top objection to this event so far is when is it? And I just overcame their objection. Yeah. Excellent. Make sense? Yeah. Excellent. So the second thing, I'll give you two. There's a, Depending on the presentation, there's about anywhere from 12 to 15 things that you want to include in your presentation. Overcoming objections is only one of them. Second one would be you must have – you mentioned this earlier – you must have some kind of reason – for the people to do it right now versus waiting and thinking about it for the next three months. Otherwise, what happens is when people think about it, they hesitate. And when they hesitate, they think of all the reasons they shouldn't do it. And then many people won't follow through. So I don't say to use this stuff to manipulate. I say use this to get people to hurry up and make a decision that either what you have to offer is yes, in fact, for them mm -hmm. or no, it's not. And I'm okay with either one. I'm not going to sit here and you know, you hear some speakers using this mind manipulation stuff, and there's even one guy out there that hypnotizes his crowd into saying yes for everything. I don't believe in that yeah, stuff. Right. I think, right. But I do believe in getting them to a point where they can make a decision, and they can, they can come from the heart and say, yes, I either want what he's got or no, and I'm solid in my no, and I'm not going to move forward with, uh, right now. Now, I'd prefer they said yes. Obviously, I have a product to sell. Um, but in order to get them to say yes, there needs to be a sense of urgency for them to say yes or no right now. And it's got to be a legitimate sense of urgency. It can't be some fake bull crap yeah. that people have heard a thousand times before. Otherwise, they won't believe you. And then you lose all credibility on everything else that you've built rapport with them over who knows how long, whether it be a conversation or a sales letter or a presentation in front of a room, whatever. So it's got to be a legitimate sense of urgency. So how do I build that into an event like this? It's very simple. The event's only for 12 people. So when I'm doing an event like this for 12 people and I'm talking on the phone and I'm talking to my ninth guy and I say, just to let you know, I only do this event once a year. It's for 12 people. And you're number nine if you say yes. And by the way, if you don't say yes, I've got another 16 people I still have to call back today probably that will say yes. So if you don't want in, I'm okay with that, but you need to decide quickly. And if your answer is no, I'm okay with that because I'll sell it out anyway but that gives the guy a reason or the girl a reason to either say yes or no very quickly on the phone. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's really important because you may have the best product in the world. And we'll talk about here in a second how to deliver on a product like that. But you may have the best coaching program in the world, the best course in the world. But unless you know how to sell it ethically, you know, without manipulation – but unless you know how to present it in the best way possible yeah. so you can bring people to make a decision as soon as possible, then you're, you're not going to do well with it. And you're not going to be able sure. to get it out there to as many people that need it 
as possible. So you're well, fan- and here's the sad thing, Joe, yeah. is that some people are very, very good at selling it and actually have a crappy course. And right. so because they're so good at selling, it's uh, McDonald's is the perfect example of this. Their their burgers are not good. They're not phenomenal. But McDonald's is a phenomenal marketing company. They know how to get people in the door um, and to buy their subpar hamburgers. Right. <laughs> you know, and uh, so selling is really. You know, uh, you hit the nail on the head. You can have the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to sell it, you're going to struggle. Also, selling is a big component to this. Oh yeah, and that's huge. So you can. It's important to have a good product. It's equally as important to know how to sell it. Um, now, here I'll add one more thing to that. Yeah. Because when you're talking to an entire audience of a thousand people, uh, you're going to have different objections from people all over the room, right? So you've got different people from different nationalities, color, race, creed, backgrounds, experience, all these things. So you need to think through a lot more objections. And the sense of urgency needs to be more of a clear sense of urgency that's designed for a room. When you're one-on-one, it's a lot, a lot easier. So if you're selling coaching, I can actually talk to the person over the phone and find out what their objections are over the phone by asking them. And by the way, this translates whether you're selling coaching to a student, uh, a new student. It's, this also translates if you're trying to buy a house from a seller and you're sitting across the table from them trying to buy their house. It's the same stuff. Yeah. But I need to overcome their objections. I need to create the other sense of urgency. And then I need to really find out where they're at. So this is where people are afraid to ask this stuff. Before I get off the phone with somebody who's either going to be a coaching student or may attend an event like this with me, I'll just ask them. Where are you at right now? Are you ready to sign up right now or not? And if they say, well, no, I'll say, okay, well, number one, tell me where you're at on the scale. Uh, 10 would be like zero to 10 scale. 10 would be like, you're giving me your credit card number right now. Zero would be, this sucks. Uh, There's no way I'm signing up for this. Where are you? Because I know that if they're at an eight, nine or a 10, that there's probably just one more little simple objection that I need to overcome in order to get them to a 10. Uh, But if they're a five, you know, they may have two or three objections. If they're at a zero, this just isn't for them at all. But I do want them to be honest. And I tell them, listen, I don't want you to be nice to me. I want you to tell me so I can put it in my notes whether or not you're seriously interested in attending this. And if they say nine, I might say, okay, why is it that you're a nine and not a 10? And they may say, well, um, you know, uh, because I'm at a nine, I want to do this, but I got to talk it over with my spouse first. Well, then I might be able to overcome that objection and say, well, that's great because we've got a 30-day spouse guarantee. And so sign up right now. That way it reserves one of the 12 spots for you because, remember, you're number nine, dude, and I'm making phone calls as soon as we get off the phone. But here's what I'll tell you. If your spouse freaks out about it, call me back up anytime before we do the event, and I'll just issue your refund. I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure you have one of the seats. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's very good. And so you have to – now, doing that one-on-one is very easy because I can ask that question. Doing it from the front of a room is a whole different experience. I need to be able to sort of preconceive what people's objections are and be able to attack those uh, within the, the presentation or else I'm going to lose them. And you teach that very, very well. I've been to your workshops before. I think I've been to two of them. And uh, no, just one. Just one. One. I Just one. Okay. And uh, it was fantastic because it's important, again, and I know – let me address this because I keep on thinking about this. You know, there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that have never even flipped their first deal. And yeah. what we're talking about is just like, what on earth? This is way yep. over my head. Okay, so yep. sorry. Maybe just skip to the next podcast, okay? Just skip <laughs> to the previous episode or something. We're, we're now talking to you guys out there who have done a lot of deals before, right? You already have an established real estate investing business. You know how to flip deals. You know how to make money. And now you're thinking about, well, how can I monetize my knowledge some more? How can I help more people? Listen, I know a lot of guys who have done coaching and training for free. And it sounds nice at first, but I guarantee you every single one of them after a few weeks of doing it is like, this sucks. It's fun helping people. but Well, and let me tell you why. Because people appreciate and will act on things in direct proportion to the amount they paid for it. If I can interject real quick, I'm very passionate about this side because my heart says I want to help people and I do want to help people. But I'll never forget this. Years ago, I sat down with one guy here in St. Louis where I live. This guy begged me to take me to lunch and he wanted to pick my brain for an hour. He said, my wife's getting ready to leave me. I'm broke. He said, I'll pay for lunch. Anyway, just please just give me like 45 minutes. And so, you know, my heart wanted to help him, and so I met him for lunch, and only instead of me meeting him at lunch at noon, like he said, 
he got there at 12.15, and I'm already irritated. Well, the reason he gets there at 12.15, he comes in sweating like a pig because his car ran out of gas because he didn't have the money for the gas to put in the car to get there. So he walked the rest of the way to the restaurant. So guess who bought lunch? <laughs> I did, right? right? And so I felt so bad for the guy. I ended up sitting there with the guy until the waitress's shift ended, and then we paid for lunch. And then guess what? The dinner crew came in, and I stayed with them through dinner. I spent like seven hours with this no guy. Way. All for free. And he had a whole notepad full of just instructions and notes and everything. And I gave him the keys to the castle. I gave him the whole recipe, everything. And I, when we left there, I said, okay, forget everything we talked about. I just Now I teach – I give three assignments. Everybody can do three things. Not everybody can do a whole note page, uh, notebook worth of stuff. So I gave him three assignments and I said, call me when you're done with those. And guess what? I didn't hear from him again. Until about 30 days later, we had our local RIA meeting. And I saw him at the RIA meeting and I approached him. I said, what's up, man? Where, where are you at with all the stuff? You were so excited when we left that day. And he looks down and he's like – "Yeah." I just don't know if any of that stuff works. And I was furious. Yeah. I mean, here's a guy who I just gave him everything. I gave him, even at the time I was charging for coaching, and I gave him all of that for free, and he did nothing with it. Why did he do nothing with it? Because he had nothing to lose. Yep. So if you think you're going to go out and change people's lives with them having nothing to lose, let me tell you, if you have any amount of experience in real estate, you know that there are times where things are going to get tough. And unless you have a big enough drive and a motivating factor to get you past the tough points, you'll quit. Sometimes the drive is having some financial loss if you don't follow through. That's good. So I would rather see you put something in place that says put some money up front and I'll give it back to you when you do some deals or something creative. But do not coach for free. When you do, you're going to get people who back out. They're not fun to coach. They're going to be the people who, when the going gets tough, they don't follow through. They're going to be the guys that you give all of your time to. And by the way, guess who bought him dinner that day too? I bought the guy lunch and dinner and spent like six or seven hours with him, and he did nothing. And yet nowadays, I get somebody who pays me $15,000 for coaching, and those are the guys that implement, and girls, that implement 100% of what we talked about. And guess what? They're the ones who get the results. Why? Because they don't want to have wasted $15,000 on coming to learn something and then not implementing it. They are at least willing to go out and try it, even if it goes against their comfort zone. Yeah, and you need, it's really important you said that. It's really important, too, thinking about opportunity cost. The time that you as an investor are spending with students is time that you could have been spending doing deals and yes. doing more marketing and talking to more sellers. So there is you, – you, it's really important that you charge for your coaching is what I'm saying. And if you have a product – it's really important that you charge as much as you can for that product. And you'll, there's a limit. You know what the market will bear. But what you well, have – the value has got to be in direct proportion sure. to what you're giving too. So if you're, you know, if you're uh, selling a course on how to make popsicles, you're not going to sell that for ten grand right. unless you're teaching somebody how to create a popsicle business. Sure. right? But if it's an in-home popsicle kit that you're teaching them how to create – that's got a certain value, but if I'm going out and teaching somebody how to make thirty thousand dollars on a flip, or if I'm going out and teaching somebody how to go do a speaking uh, event or create a coaching program where they're going to make six figures this year, I can charge a little bit more for that and feel good about it because I'm giving them the keys yeah. to make a whole lot more money. Well said, well said. So this this podcast isn't obviously for the beginner who's just trying to do their first deal. I get it. This is a lot of you guys out there. Um, you do a lot of deals. And you want to start helping and coaching people. And you maybe don't know where to start. You're thinking, well, what do I do first? Do I? My own journey, by the way, I want to go back into this, is I started coaching people for free. And I realized real quickly that's a lot of work for just free coaching. So then I started charging $1,000. Well, and Joe, it's more work for the free people. It's yeah. even more because those are the people that are the hardest to coach. So yeah. sorry to interrupt, but you're that's, right. That's true. And so, you know, I started charging a thousand bucks and I realized what I'm offering is worth way more than that. So I started, and then I was afraid like, well, would anybody pay me three grand? I was like, oh wait, I don't think anybody would pay me that much for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I would go and meet them. This was in St. Louis. I would meet them at the coffee store, you know, the coffee shop. And I realized again, you know what? My time is worth a lot more. I'm showing them how to make three grand a week, right? Do four deals a month. I, sure. I, 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 what I'm doing is worth way more than that. So, you know, I slowly start building my confidence up and start charging more and more and more. 
where now you know we're charging three to five grand for group coaching, ten to twenty grand for individual one-on-one coaching. Sell my courses anywhere from five hundred bucks to a thousand bucks to more, and uh, I've not seen. I mean, as I as long as the value's there, right? And 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 I start pushing my prices higher and higher because I realize that um, I have a limited t- uh, span of time in my day that I can help people. Um, I actually make more money the more I charge. But let's talk, Sean, about um, real quickly starting a coaching program. I mean, what what does – there's different ways to coach, right? There's one-on-one. There's group coaching. Mm-hmm. There's local coaching. There's maybe niche coaching on specific niches. What have you – what are some of the types of styles of coaching that you like? Well, uh, you know, there's all different kinds of ways to coach. But first of all, I just want to reiterate that you don't even need an audience. So some people will sit here and say, well, that's easy for you. You know, you own a RIA there in St. Louis or you speak on stages. Um, when I first got started, I didn't have any of that stuff. Uh, I built it up over the years because I just enjoy it. But the fact of the matter is you can actually partner with somebody else who has an audience to offer whatever you're going to offer, whether it be a yeah. coaching program or a training package or whatever. There's other people that have audiences and they'll do joint venturing with you where you can actually promote whatever it is that you're promoting to their audience and then you'll end up splitting uh, whatever the commissions are or the fees or uh, you can structure that however you want. It may not be a 50-50 split. It may be a Maybe you get 90% and give them 10%. I don't know. Whatever it is that you negotiate, but you don't necessarily have to have a built-in audience either. What you need to have is a well-structured program, and you need to know how to sell it. And when you have those two things and can provide enough value, then it's a no-brainer. Even if you haven't done it before, even if you don't have experience in the actual coaching realm. And again, I don't want to make this just seem like anybody can do this because not everybody should be doing this. Anybody could, not everybody should. So you got to have to some uh, value that you can actually provide to your audience. But I like a couple different programs. There's there's the one to many program that you're talking about, where you can get on a conference call and you can uh, you can coach. You can have 50 people on the call or 5,000, and it almost doesn't matter because it's you coaching many people on a process, if yeah. you will. Yeah. You can do one-on-one stuff, where which gets a little bit more involved. I do have a one-on-one coaching program. Joe is, has been in it. I've spent a lot of time with Joe over the past, I guess, six or seven years now. And, and look where it got me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm unbelievable. Right? <laughs> but uh, you know, you can do the one-on-one. Um, I really enjoy that when I want to dig deep with somebody, but I'm very selective on who I will choose to coach. Because one-on-one, you really get to know people, and it's no fun coaching somebody who never does anything that you encourage them to do. So I have some very specific boundaries that I'll put in place with one-on-one, and it's not cheap either. Um, one-on-one, obviously, but those takes boundaries, more time. Those boundaries are really, really important. Very important. Uh, and, and, but we could spend a whole hour talking about that. But if you're starting a coaching business, it's really important that you set it up right and you set up the right boundaries because it can consume you. And pretty soon, at the end of the day, you're like, "Where did my day go?" And, and it just—it can be the greatest thing you've ever been uh, done, a bit a part of, or it can be hell. Mm-hmm. And all of that is based on the expectations that you set with your students up front. I remember when I first started, Joe. I, I don't know if you remember this. I won't mention her name, but there was a girl in our program, and she, within about three weeks of being in the program, she left the program. She was so furious because I would not give her my cell phone number. Because she was not allowed to call me at 24 hours a day. And she was mad because she is a night owl. And she said she wanted to be able to call me at 11 p.m. anytime she had a question. Now, in the beginning, I didn't know how to set those expectations. And, of course, most of us would think, well, of course you can't call me anytime you want at 11 p.m. But unless you set those expectations, some people are going to think, hey, I'm just because I'm paying money, I should have unlimited access to my coach. I want to be there for my students more than anybody. Trust me, I want my students to get the best results on earth. But it's also got to be under the boundaries that make sense for my own life too. And if you don't have those decided in advance, then you're setting yourself up for a coaching program that you're going to absolutely hate. Well, it's also important to understand the the, – have a code of ethics, right? And I think this is something I borrowed from you and I still use it today. I have all my one-on-one coaching students sign a code of ethics. What – what in, what uh, what parts of in, why is integrity important and what are some ethical things that you know this this is the line of demarcation that 
you can't cross over. And if you do, you're out of the coaching program. So it's right. important to think about issues of integrity and ethics and what's okay and what's not and have that stuff written down with the boundaries in place and the yep. expectations in place so that they can sign it and know exactly what they're getting into. Well, and some of that's hard to figure out when you haven't done it before. Sure. I mean, now that I've done this for seven years, I've figured out what really works and what doesn't work. Um, some of this will be a little bit of a trial and error for you in the beginning, and you're going to learn real fast. Uh, but you but you must have those boundaries put in place, man. I'm, I'm telling you, when I first got started coaching, there was the part of me that loved it, but I also always felt like I was in debt to people. Mm-hmm. Like if they called me, uh, that I should call return their call within eight and a half seconds. Otherwise, they're going to leave the program or they're not getting what they paid for. Now, I just set those expectations up front. So, I, you know, like with Joe, Joe is in our, our uh, Diamond program, which is one of our top two high-end coaching programs. And in his program, Joe comes to three retreats per year. We actually do these physical retreats where everybody gets together in fun area of the country. Matter of fact, we've got one coming up next week. And... Um, and while we're there, we get a lot of stuff done there. But then in between retreats, Joe also gets one 30-minute coaching session with his coach per month. Now, some of you might look at that and go, that's it? That's all he gets? And he's paying X amount of dollars for this program? Well, yeah. In Joe's case, Joe doesn't need help getting started. He's not brand new. And actually, that's the person I would prefer to coach today. Joe doesn't need help with every little single step of the business. Joe needs help getting his mind out of the gutter sometimes, just like we all do. And so I can accomplish that in 30 minutes a month and get them right back on track and get them right back in between retreats so that the retreats are where really the major change happens. And then in between, it's just kind of like maintenance. But I set those expectations. Now, if Joe needed help during the month, I wouldn't deny Joe help during the month. My heart wants to help him. But the program says that Joe gets 30 minutes a month of my time. Mm -hmm. And anything more than that is not an expectation of Joe's. It's kind of like, a bonus if I happen to give it to him. And so he doesn't abuse that. I don't abuse it either. If he needed some more help one month, of course I would sit down and help him. But that's what the program says. And those are the boundaries that we put in place in the beginning. And that's why it works so well. Yeah. And I think um, it's important to understand too, and you mentioned this before, you, you don't have to have a national audience already. Yes. Right? You don't have to have even a product already. In fact, it's better that you don't many times, right? Because when you learn how to create a coaching program or how to how to position your product the right way. It helps you clarify what the coaching program needs to be or what's going to actually be in the product, right? Yeah. So we talked – there's there's one-to-one coaching. There's one-to-many coaching, which is like group coaching. Um, there's also uh, uh, coaching that people do in the local area as well. Right? Yeah. So like yep. you, you don't have to have a national podcast. You don't have to be invited to go speak at all these RIAs all over the country. And, and I've been there, done that. That's just not for everybody, right? Um, but we, we know some people who are in the Life and Air program and in other programs as well that uh, are doing having tremendous success right now coaching at the local level in their own market and partnering with students and rehabbing deals. I mean, let's talk about Steve. Uh, and, and maybe some other people I you do want to, real quick, Joe, I want to preface with one thing because there's, uh, I'll, I'm, uh, I'll talk about like Steve's program here in a second, but I want to make sure that I'm not, I will give away as much of that as I can without. There's a piece of that that's proprietary information that I cannot share on the, this okay, webinar right. today. But what I will share is the, this guy, Steve, for example, um, we coach a number of people that do what he does. He's got a local coaching program. It's just for local rehabbers in his area. And he charges a monthly fee. He charges an upfront fee to be a part of the program. And I'm not talking a cheap upfront fee. It's eight or $9,000 to be in his program. Um, he charges a monthly fee uh, to also be in the program. And then he rehabs houses with students. And he splits deals with them. we got a bunch of students that actually do that. Yeah, yeah. And on a local level, it's great because he's a rehabber anyway. He loves what he does. He's really good at what he does. And he's already doing his own marketing. But Steve doesn't want to do a ton of rehabs on his own. So this turned into him thinking, okay, well, when I get a deal that maybe is I've already got one working right now and I don't want to take on two or three rehabs, why don't I wholesale it? And that turned into, well, why would I wholesale it? Half the people I'm wholesaling it to need help figuring out how to rehab it and get money together and all this stuff. And he thought, well, why don't I just help help them with it? And so I'll wholesale them the deal, but I'll make them be my student. Mm-hmm. So he actually, check this out, he actually gets properties. He wholesales the deal to his student. 
Now, if you're if you're somebody that has a little bit of coin or, or some access to capital, you could also fund the deal for yeah. your student. Now you're eliminating every excuse for your student to fail. So he would even fund it for the student as a hard money lender, and he'd charge fees and points for that. But then on the back end, when the property's rehabbed and sold, he now splits the profit with his student on top of it. So he's helping a new guy get a business up and running that he would not have otherwise been able to get up and running as easily because Steve's sharing his contractors with the guy. He's sharing a lot of the resources. He's coaching the guy through his first three or four deals. But Steve is getting paid an upfront fee for it. He's getting paid monthly for it. He is making money on the hard money lending fees if he needs that. And on top of it, when the deal closes, Steve gets half of the back end. Everybody wins. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And Steve doesn't go speak around the country. He doesn't even have a product. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he partnered with us at Life and Air. And he said, because we have a a rehabbing product. And he said, hey, guys, can I offer your training products to my students? And I'll just have that be included in the upfront fee. I'll pay you guys a royalty for being able to use your product. He doesn't have any of the product, nothing. He got this up and going in no yeah. time. You don't need a product. Uh, he didn't need to have an audience. He had to create one there locally, which I can show you how to do that too. That's not a big deal. Um, but all these things that you think you need, you may not even need them. Yeah. And it's hot. I'm telling you right now, that is a highly profitable business. I love that. Way, that's scalable. Yeah. Because there's only so many rehabs that you could physically do on your own, but you could coach. It is easy to coach a dozen people in your own local area yeah. on doing rehabs because they're doing 90% of the work. You're just coaching them through the process. I've got one of my students that uh, coaches people up in Wisconsin. Last I checked, I think he's got maybe 36, 32 or 36 local people yeah. in his coaching program, all of which are paying an upfront fee all of which pay a monthly fee, and he does deal splits with them on the back end. They wholesale their students the deal. If their student can't find a deal on their own, they help them by wholesaling a deal. If the student doesn't have money, they help them put the money together, and they either get a little spiff from a hard money lender that they refer the student to, or they become the hard money lender and they make money there too. It is insanely profitable, and they freaking love it. They do. And this guy, Steve, we're talking about, he has a video testimonial uh, of this lady that did this deal and uh, just in tears, I mean, uh, watching the video teared yeah. me up. You know, yeah, it's like, it's holy smokes, you know. Just the, the we, we've been blessed in the United States and blessed in our businesses as well with prosperity, with, with a lot of really good knowledge and training that we've invested a lot of our own time and money into, right, hiring our own coaches. So, I, you know, I, I love this business because we can now share and help other people and get paid for it as well because it's worth it. Sure. We're, we're delivering tremendous value. All right. So um, Sean and I have been talking about helping people do this. Sean has got a lot of experience with, this, with the speaking from a platform, creating uh, a, a sales presentation and converting people and then creating a product that fits that, right? We need to, it's important to go in that kind of an order. Um, I've also have a lot of experience doing webinars, creating online marketing funnels with podcasts, with webinars, with, with email autoresponders and building a list and selling information online. Sean's, um, Sean, a lot of your courses still are, are online, but they're started off kind of with a physical product as well. So Sean and I have been talking, you know, I, I, I get requests all the time from folks, people telling me, you know what, I want to start a coaching business. In fact, you would be surprised, Sean. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, at, at least a dozen people that I've interviewed on this podcast over the years have started coaching businesses. Because of the podcast, they get contacted by people. In fact, there's, ah. a, there's a gentleman uh, with a large um, that I interviewed a couple times. And somebody from a, a large national news channel, I'll just say that, television, who's oh, on yeah, TV right. all the time. Yeah. Uh, contacted him, didn't contact me, <laughs> contacted my guest and said, hey, will you help me do deals? And I heard you on Joe's podcast. And he said, yeah, sure. And this guy has done like 10 deals. He's probably making more money doing deals than he is doing the news unless he's making an ungodly I know who you're talking about. This is a national news yes. celebrity. If you said the name, everybody on this podcast would know who it is. Right. Doing deals with one of the guys on my podcast. And so we've spent a lot of time talking about coaching business and how to do this. So it can be insanely profitable, and um, you don't need to have a huge list. You don't need to have an, a product already. You, you do need to have the knowledge on how to flip deals, right? 
And, yeah. and everybody has their own special niche. You know, it could be wholesaling, could be rehabbing, it could be short sales, it could be MLS deals, finding deals on the MLS, maybe social media and online marketing and getting deals from Facebook ads and Google ads and things like that. So there's lease options. There's there's dozens and dozens of different niches that I think everybody who's been doing deals is is good at something and they have other people around them that want their help. So Sean and I have been talking about doing a, a workshop together. And we're still trying to figure out the details and um, still trying to work out how we're going to deliver it. It's either going to be a live workshop in St. Louis or it's going to be done online over a period of six to eight weeks. Uh, but it's going to be a small knit group. Can you talk a little bit, Sean, about um, what what we're thinking of doing and, and maybe how this might fit for people listening to this? Uh, a little bit, but so much of it's undecided yet that uh, right. I'll just share what some of the thoughts are. Um, but, uh, you know, we get requests all the time. I, I coach a lot of coaches now. Um, matter of fact, I'm starting to get a nickname of the coach's coach because a lot of the people that we have been coaching have become coaches over the years. And if I'm being totally transparent with you, I get more today out of helping people than I do flipping houses. Not to say that flipping houses isn't profitable. I just... You know, when you flip a deal, there's that moment that you flip it and you get your check and you're all excited and it's an awesome feeling. So don't get me wrong. I still like that. But there's something really awesome about seeing a family's life change because you taught them something that they used and now they're in a different financial position than they've ever been in. Or, you know, with what we teach and, sh- and coach and share at Life and Air, we're not just teaching flipping houses stuff. We're not just coaching on that. We're helping people how to run businesses that serve their lives where people that were working 70, 80, 90 hours a week before are now working 20 and they have time to go ride the boat with the kids and go on vacation and travel and go to Prague like you did and, you know, take the three month trip in the RV. All that stuff is to me why I do what I do. So we don't have a structure for this yet. Right now, all of this has been is some conversations with Joe and I where I have said to Joe, I've got so many people that are dying to have information on how to design a coaching program Do you ever get that? And Joe's like, yeah, I get that all the time too. So we are considering putting together some kind of training, but we want to see if a gauge, if there's interest in this first and we don't know what it's going to cost yet. We don't even know what it's going to be, but we decided, you know, number one, let's do a podcast to at least enlighten people to the fact that this might be something that they, if you've got a little experience, again, this isn't for everybody, but if you've got a little experience in something that can benefit others and it doesn't have to be just real estate, I should mention either. Um, then you may be able to turn that into a program that you can coach other people through and you can make really good money doing it. How we're going to structure that yet, I don't know exactly. But right now, the purpose of this is to to hopefully entertain a little bit, hopefully give you guys some good nuggets that uh, will get you thinking in a little bit different way than maybe you've been thinking in the past. And also, maybe aren't you going to send up a page, set up a page yeah. or something where we can kind of gauge people's interest? We haven't even created the page yet, guys. I don't even know what's <laughs> going to be on the page, but um, we want to see from you guys what you're interested in learning more about. Do you want to learn more about speaking? Do you want to learn more about uh, how you can create a coaching program? Do you need to learn more about how to close people where you're actually developing a presentation where you're you're actually selling people on how to get into some things like this? Maybe you already have a coaching program. You're already doing well with it, but you don't know how to get more people into it. So we're kind of trying to gauge what you guys need so that we can determine, number one, if we want to create something for you. And number two, if we do, we're making sure we're creating what it is that you guys say exactly. that you want instead of us just thinking that we know what you want and being wrong. Yeah, so uh, well, we're going to throw together a page, and this page will have a survey on there so you can tell us you know, what you feel like you need the most. And we want to gauge kind of your experience and where you're at and see if there is any interest in it. If there's not, that's fine. But uh, I have a page. It will be at joemccall.com slash coach training, joemccall.com slash coach training. And if you also go to the show notes, realestateinvestingmastery.com, look up – this episode, you'll see a link to that. Um, but I think it's going to, I'm excited about that, Sean. I think it's going to be so much fun. Um, and, and I get requests all the time. I think this is exactly what people need yeah. out there. And uh, I'm excited about this, especially getting to do it with you. Um, I, I, you know, we, I've known you a long time as a friend, but you're also a coach and a mentor to me. And so I'm quite humbled to actually be able to, to help people with you in this. And, and I've, I tell you, man, I've been so blessed over the years, and and I feel like this for me this is something that I can give back to people now, and help them grow their 
uh, real estate business, their coaching business, and uh, and help everybody make a lot of money and travel. Listen, let, let's do this. I'm going to Prague in a couple months. Let's do a workshop in Prague. How about that? That'd be cool. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll just kind of wrap up by saying one yeah. thing. It's it's one thing, and all of you, even if you're brand new, I, I hope you listen to this till the end. If so, obviously you're hearing me right now. But uh, when you're brand new, it starts out with me, 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 and this is kind of how life starts out too. Where when you're a baby, it's all about me. My two year old, it's never about daddy or mommy. It's about what do I want right now, and it kind of happens when you're an investor too. You're you're out there, you're trying to build for me, me, me. And that's okay. There's a season for that. But then eventually you graduate and it starts to turn in instead of just trying to consume everything you can and get as much as you can, it starts to turn into what can I become in this process? And you start to become a more savvy investor. You start to become somebody who knows how to do deals better. You know how to negotiate a little bit better. Maybe you know how to to, uh, flip houses a little bit better or rehab better, whatever your thing is. And then eventually it goes from what you become to now what you can give back. And that's kind of what we see in life also with many people, not everybody. But I think the true joy is when you can start to give back. And for me, I still love the real estate business. Don't get me wrong. But to me, I mentioned this earlier. I love helping other people now to get everything that they want. And my focus um, has been changing in the past year to where instead of just focusing on people who just want to make an impact on their own financial um, life in their own real estate business, I've now started to coach other people who want to help other people in their businesses as well. So it went from me just helping myself to me helping somebody else to now me helping other people who can now help other people. And I got to tell you, man, it is so much fun to see now – the levels of people that I've helped four or five levels deep, and I'm not taking credit for it. I just stumbled across something that happens to work. But to see some of these stories that are happening four or five levels deep of somebody I've coached to coach someone else, these stories are unfreaking believable. Yeah. And I, I hope if you get anything out of this call, even if you're not ready to become a coach now, I hope you aspire to one day at least make a difference in the lives of more than just you and your own family because it's so much more rewarding. And if you can get paid really well doing it, by all means, go for it. That's awesome. I couldn't have said it better. JoeMcCall.com slash coach training. JoeMcCall.com slash coach training. And uh, we'll also have a link on the show notes for this podcast episode at realestateinvestingmastery.com. Thanks, Sean. This has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I've tried so hard not to say stupid jokes (laughs) and make fun of you. We did pretty good. I know. We did. Unbelievable. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. But Sean and I are always going back and forth. <laughs> saying, <laughs> being, being dingalings. Hey, hey, thanks again, man. We'll talk soon. Yeah, man. Talk See to you soon. Bye-bye. See you.